This is Dawn Cafe, a recent pop-up demonstration in Tokyo that aimed to show the world how people with severely limited mobility could still find ways to work via technology. Named Dawn Cafe version beta, it was set up as a limited time event running from November 26th to December 7th 2018. Located on the first floor of the Japan National Foundation building in Toronomon, Tokyo, it's a collaboration between Orilab Inc, MPO Nippon Foundation and ANA. Partly funded by a crowdfunding campaign on Japanese Kickstarter like Makuake, the original target of 1.5 million yen was topped by 219%, finishing on an outstanding 3.3 million yen. The waitstaff in the cafe are these Orihime D robots. They aren't functioning autonomously though. Each robot is actually being controlled remotely by a person via the internet. Standing at 1.2 meters and weighing around 20 kilograms, each robot is also equipped with a camera, microphone and speaker that allows the operator and customers to communicate in real time. Beyond the novelty felt by the customers, you could also hear the joy in the voices of the operators as they delivered drinks and chit-chatted with their guests. Before succumbing to their illnesses, most of these people led regular lives and worked jobs just like anyone else. And through this technology, they are taking a small step towards making that a normal part of their lives once more. The man behind this technology is Kentaro Yoshifuji, CEO of Ori Lab and the force behind the driving vision to help bring more opportunities to people suffering from debilitating diseases. In an article from Japan Times, he was quoted as saying, I want to create a world in which people who can't move their bodies can work too. The kinds of diseases he's referring to are life-altering conditions such as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, more commonly known as ALS, or motor neuron disease. This robot is controlled by Nozomi Murata, personal secretary to Yoshifuji-san. She suffers from autophagic vacuolar myopathy, a neurological disorder primarily affecting skeletal muscles and reducing movement. In total, 10 staff have been hired for the event and are paid a salary of 1,000 yen per hour to serve their guests. This is a standard salary in Japan and given to most part-time workers in the service industry. As well as giving these people back some of their freedom, it will also allow them to earn money themselves and live a more comfortable life in the process. Name badges are attached to the front of each robot, allowing the guests to know a little bit about the person on the other end of the line. This is 45-year-old Koki from Mie Prefecture. He mentions currently releasing a short documentary on YouTube, and some of his favourite things include the Hanshin Tigers baseball team, beer, hard rock music, and the All Blacks rugby team. Another staff member working on the day I visited was Mika-chan, who lives in Aichi Prefecture. Her name tag says she was a former bank clerk, former nursery teacher, and former representative barrister. At the bottom is her personal message reading, Challenge-yo, mino raseru no ga daisuki desu. Meaning, I really love it when challenges are rewarding. You may have noticed that Mika-chan is operating a slightly smaller robot. This is the standard Orihime model and was designed for children who are unable to attend class due to illness or other issues. Compared to the larger model, it only weighs 600 grams and is 21.5 centimeters tall. It's also currently being employed by over 70 different companies nationwide for telecommuting purposes. Although not on display in the cafe, Orilab has a third product in its line called the Orihime Eye. This is a computer interface that allows users with severely reduced mobility to spell out text with their eyes. The text will then be transmitted to the Orihime and vocalized by a built-in voice simulator. In this video, a patient with ALS can be seen operating all kinds of functions on the Orihime via the Orihime Eye, being able to quickly pan the camera around the room and interact with Yoshifuji-san at an almost natural speed. Obviously, being a demonstration, there are still things to work out, and in this pop-up cafe, there are still human staff on standby to quickly step in and correct any issues that may arise. Thankfully, these robots seem robust enough to take the odd accidental knock they're likely to receive over their lifetime. Interestingly, the interior of the cafe is actually modelled after a cafe in the 2008 anime Time of Eve, which shares the same name. It's a story set in a world where androids are commonplace, and the Time of Eve cafe is a place where androids and humans are free to mingle as equals. It's an interesting parallel and seems like an overly appropriate theme for such an event. At the front of the cafe is a sign that reads Toten Naidewa, 
人間とロボットの区別をしません。A phrase that means in this cafe we will not distinguish between humans and robots. Yoshi Fujisan is hoping that a fully operational Dawn Cafe will be ready before the 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games to further help spread the message of his concept to people from all around the globe. If there is any country on this planet that can have such a place and incorporate it into people's daily lives, it's most certainly Japan. If you're planning to visit Japan in the next few years, then this is definitely a project to keep an eye on, and there will no doubt be more trial runs opening in the future. If Yoshi Fujisan is to realize his goal of opening a permanent cafe before the 2020 Olympics. If you'd like to find out more about the efforts of Ori Lab, then I've left a link to their website down in the description. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more from Kantan Japan in the future, then subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification for instant updates on future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.